Hello everybody, this is Miranda the Hybrid and welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. Now today we actually have just three quick tricks I'm going to be going over that will really improve your art. It's helpful if you're doing it on a digital program, but if you're not and you just have a regular traditional piece of art, you can take a picture and use your phone to do the things we're going to be talking about. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to talk about is silhouette. Your person needs to have a readable silhouette. You know what's going on in your head. Your viewer does not. Viewers can't read your mind. So let's take this picture I drew a while ago, for instance. He has a nice dark background, so that's all cool. But what happens if we take that dark background away? If we go in here, we take that off. Is his silhouette readable? Let's take a look. We don't really need to do much for him since he's almost completely black and white. But just in case, I'm going to turn off a lot of the highlights. There we go. Now, is that a readable silhouette? There's something very weird going on with his left leg, but you'll notice these open lines. Let me show you what I mean. This is called having an open figure. He has a distinct head, distinct arms. There's open space and then distinct legs. The negative space is extremely important because what the negative space does is it helps define the silhouette of your figure. If you have your figure all bundled up, kind of like, you know, like, if I had made him more like this, straight on with the hand coming towards you like this, and then maybe his leg all the way up or something, essentially a closed figure can be difficult to read. So you want to add space in between. The kind of space that's not going to change the readability, not going to change the pose, not going to change the emotion of your character, but just space that will allow people to read it better. Now this is a, that's an animation thing. So he does have a very readable figure. Now let's take a look at a different one. Since this is all colored and rendered, it's pretty easy to see it's two giant tall aliens hugging and having a happy time together. But what do their silhouettes look like? Now if we take this and fill it in with black, then turn off the original picture. How readable is that? That could be multiple different things. In fact, if I showed this to somebody first and then I opened it up, sure, it could be two people, but where are their arms? Where is there anything? What kind of clothes are they wearing? That's the importance of silhouette readability. Some artists actually start by drawing their silhouette first and then they fill in all the details. It looks a little bit something like this. They'll be like, Ah, superhero, or gotta draw, they're gonna have their hand over here. Then a leg can come out like this, and another one can come out like that. And they'll just literally fill in their entire drawing first, just so they have a good idea of what it's going to look like. And so they'll start with black to make sure it's the darkest, make sure it's the most readable. Then maybe they'll start adding in some details, and then they'll move on to grays, such as what if the sky has a cape? And they'll make sure it's a dark enough gray that it stands out from the background, but it's a light enough gray that the character behind it is still readable. See, that's a readable figure. We could turn that into something. This leads into trick number two, turning your picture black and white. We're gonna choose one of my favorite pictures I've ever done for this. We're gonna tear it to pieces. So this is one of my favorites I've ever done. I'm very proud of this picture. It was a big step forward for me. What happens if we turn it black and white? Let's just bring that saturation all the way down. This is both a good example and a bad example of what you should do. <laughs> Let me explain. When you go in and turn a picture black and white, it allows you to see where the highest and lowest points of contrast are. Sometimes you get stuck in a situation where you think you have high contrast, but you actually don't. It's just two different colors sitting next to each other. Now, there are several different ways to drive contrast. There's shape contrast, there's color contrast, there's brightness contrast, and then there's focus, uh, in focus versus out of focus contrast, and several more than I'm probably forgetting right now. But black and white is the most readable when it comes to human vision. And also you gotta remember, there are colorblind people who are looking at your art. You need to make sure it's readable for them too. Imagine what all your art looks like to somebody who's colorblind. So let's take a look into this picture. Our main character down here has a decently high contrast from all points of her background. Her dark arm next to the white tile, her dark pants next to the lighter tile, dark head next to the white tile, our main character has enough high contrast to push her away from her backgrounds and make her readable. Now, what about Queen Elecreu? This is a little bit different. 
These tones here are pretty different Similar. from these tones, but this one giant tone here is all a solid tone, whereas her clothing has a lot of different variation, which is his own kind of contrast. Now that I remember, there is contrast of having lots of detail and no detail at all. Arguably, on her body, this is her highest point of contrast. We have these bright plates that make up the foot armor, and then it's against this dark part of her cloak dress. So that's actually the driving contrast point on her. Our two highest points of contrast, actually our three highest points of contrast in the picture, are the wing of the statue against the dark backdrop, our character's head against the white, and then the queen's bright armor against her dark cloak. Now this is actually a decently readable picture because of its high contrast points. I purposefully left Queen Alec Rayu to blend into her background. That was actually an artistic choice. But it could be seen as a negative because it makes her kind of difficult to see. But on the other hand, literally, that is something I purposely chose to do because I wanted to make her seem like she was just coming out. And you're kind of looking at the person's perspective. You're looking at the person's perspective. Oh my god, shiny boots. And you look up and 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 up. Disapproving face of the queen blending into the shadows. So that was actually a purposeful muddling of contrast. But all the other points that I wanted to draw attention to do have high contrast. Bam, 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 as I just showed you. Now let's take one that doesn't have good contrast at all because it's in the dark. Bam, look at this one. Now this one may seem really cool because it has a lot of detail, but this detail is masking a lot of mistakes I made when I drew it initially. I did purposefully put this bright armor against this dark area to make her stand out. But then what about everything else? As pretty as this is, as highly detailed as it is, it's difficult to keep your eye on it. Let me show you. If we turn down the saturation, there's so many different details and so many different points that your eye is being drawn to that you're kind of starting to get a few problems and it's hard to keep a focal point. The focal point of the picture is this buddy up here. And then it leads your eye down in this giant C curve. But we are missing two things here. We're missing contrast of character, because if you look at that from far away, you might think that this entire creature is one entire creature, where in reality, it's, you know, the Queen of the Magi sitting upon General Hector's back. You can see these two tones right over here are basically exactly the same, so it means it makes it seem almost like this is a piece of the background, which is a negative. And as your eye keeps wandering around, this claw is blending into the bottom of his chin, the only thing keeping this part of his head away from his leg is the fact that there's a strong highlight point being driven down that way. So as glorious as this picture is to look at, it has a lot of problems. How do you solve them? First, you have to look at your picture as a whole and decide what you want the focal point to be. For me, my focal point is the illusionist, so not as much other things matter. That means I want to maybe put a bit more shadow down here on the foot to make sure the bottom of his chin stands out. Maybe I want to darken where his foot is over here as well, and maybe even over here to make his face stand out, because frankly his face is blending into the background. How am I going to make Queen Elagreu look like she's actually not blended into his body? I can definitely add a bit more shadow. I can add more shadow over here, and then we can jump into our highlight colors. This guy is the focal point. May as well brighten him up a bit, right? Make that highlight bright, make it glow along her side. Add more into his body, maybe his swirls. This part of her face, if he has that high of a brightness, this part of her face is going to have a lot more highlight on it, as is her armor and this part of her leg reaching downwards. Suddenly we're starting to see more figure readability because we're sitting down and taking the time to drive those darks and lights to make the entire picture more readable. It is difficult if you're doing a picture that's dark, I will admit that. Let's make sure to add a highlight along his leg to really, really show that there is a bright thing happening way up there. Then on his shoulder, and then on his head. Bam! Suddenly this entire picture is more readable and it has a brighter point. So even, even cool, cool pictures need workovers like that. And that leads into the final trick and perhaps the easiest one to work with. One thing you can do, and you want to do it in the early stages of your drawing and not have a mistake and do it later like this, is simply flipping your canvas around. Let me show you why. See how jarring that is? 
Just flipping the canvas, even though this one doesn't have that many problems, will allow you to see anatomy and perspective problems way better than you would normally see them. For instance, now, <laughs> months after turning this into the person who's supposed to go to, I see that his arm is having some serious anatomical issues right here. That back arm, that doesn't look good. Technically, it could be going back like this, but then where's the elbow going to hinge? See, a picture that I put in months and months ago has a serious anatomical problem that I only saw now that I flipped it around for the very first time ever. Same thing with the face. Look how much larger that part of the jaw is than this one. Look how rounded and smooth that is, but how large it is. The entire face is leaning that way. If I had just flipped it around when I was still doing that sketch, I could have caught that and fixed it. And then after you're done flipping it around, and fixing all the things, adjusting your sketch, you just take it and you flip it right back over and it should look a lot better. And it's really weird that from this perspective it looks fine, but when you flip it you find all the little problems that you missed before, right? Let's do it with this picture. I've never actually tried. Let's go on our layer. Let's flip horizontal. And already I am seeing so many different problems with this picture. Oh God. Let's just point out a few of them. Her face, her entire face, is way too slanted that way. We would want to adjust it so it's more like this. Increase the height of her eyebrow on one side because it's leaning. That's just one problem. Another problem is that her neck is going straight down here, but there's an equal length between each shoulder, which means that the perspective is incorrect. Her shoulders are curving over, but this one should be more further out than that one because of that perspective. And then I'm not even gonna start on the problems I'm seeing on Baby Yadel on here. That is just way too much. So those are the three tricks I want you to go away with that will actually help you a lot with your art. One, make sure your silhouette is readable. Two, turn your picture black and white so you can see where your focal point is and see where things are not readable because their tones are too similar. And three, flip your canvas around back and forth and adjust proportions, adjust perspective, adjust wherever the body angle is until it looks good from both flipped angles. And then you know you got it right. Please apply these. Tell me if they helped. Tell me if you have any personal ones that you use down in the comments. Tomorrow I will be putting out an announcement video about the channel. And this Art Talk Thursday, guess what? We are going to be talking about open and readable figures and the importance of readability along with its historical relevance in animation and cartooning. So thank you guys for watching. If this helped you, give me a little subscribe down there or a like or whatever you want to do. Leave me a smiley face in the comment section. Look out for that announcement video because I'm going to need your guys' help. That should be coming out tomorrow at like, I don't know, 12. And as per usual, drink your water, get your sleep, believe in yourself, and chase your dreams. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye